Welcome to the first episode of our Stardom Success video series, where we're going to shine a light on the entrepreneurial spirits in our locality. Today, we're on our top Ayla Shoes with us, a beacon of innovation and leadership in the business supplies and equipment industry. Ailish is Managing Director of Leinster Hygiene Products and not only has steered her company through remarkable growth, but has also set a standard for excellence and commitment. With over three, seven years at the helm, she has transformed Leinster Hygiene Products into one of Ireland's leading independent hygiene and janitorial supplies companies. Ailish's journey is a testament to the power of strategic vision and relentless dedication, supported by her academic foundation in business management for Rathmines Business College. Today, she's here to share her invaluable insights, the highs and lows of her journey, and her forward leaning approach to business development and customer service. Ailish, welcome and thank you very much for coming along and doing what is the first video of this series. Uh, you are my guinea pig, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, hopefully everything goes as swimmingly as possible. But we'll have a discussion, but so format and questions here, but hopefully have a little bit of free form discussion as well. So, um, thank you so much for this opportunity and it's lovely to be here and thank you for the invitation. I'm very honoured and that was a lovely introduction. Thank you. We know each other a little bit. We were in BNI, which is a global networking organisation together, but we are in a local chapter together, 40 members. I know you are still involved. I've stepped back at the family obligations at the moment, but we, for a year, helmed as president yourself as the Honourable President and myself as the lacking Vice President for a year. So we had a good experience working together and also why you were my first call to give me a dig out and be the first guest on this podcast. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's open up with a bit of an introductory question about how you started in business. So what inspired you to start your business and how did you turn said inspiration into action? Oh, and that's a very loaded question. However, way back in the early 80s was when Leinster Hygiene Products was established. And uh, I worked in a company similar to what I do at the moment. And the company I worked for, I was sort of admin, answering telephones, that kind of thing. And they were looking for a sales rep. And as they put it, they were looking for a salesman. However, I decided that I would like to go for that opportunity as this salesperson and made it known to my boss at the time that this is what I would like to do. And my boss said to me, but it's a man we're looking for. And I thought, I have the experience and know the products and would really like to be that salesperson to represent the company. And again, he said, we're actually looking for a salesman. And bear in mind that this was very early 80s. I went home to my dad at the time, Larry Hughes, who was a, a great businessman in his day. And we had a little conversation around what had happened. And I have four brothers. And he said to me, well, of course you can do this. And we're going to do this. And I went, OK, so we're going to do this. Leinster Hygiene Products was born out of that experience. And we have been going, as you said, for over 37 years. And now a family run business with my brother, Robbie Hughes. We both jointly manage Leinster Hygiene Products and have 37 years experience as we've stated. That was how it came to fruition. It's a funny one. I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs I've talked to that, I don't know if it's the right word I'm looking for, but it's almost, there's an element of vengeance or retribution is like how they started off. A former employer told them they couldn't do something or that they wouldn't, they wouldn't be promoted to a certain position when they knew that they had the capabilities to do it. I, I think you're just right, yeah. And I think the first sort of woman inside me at the time, a, a young girl, and today been, I think, International Women's Day maybe is a little bit more relevant to that I felt I could do this job. And I felt that I wasn't being recognised as the person that could do it because of my gender. So here I am. And that's how Leinster Hygiene basically was established because of that factor. And I'm very proud of that. So the next question I have, you might have answered, but there might be another moment in here as well. I have a feeling this moment with your dad might be the, the, the moment we're talking about here. But can you share a pivotal moment or decision in that journey that kind of influenced your pathway to success? Uh, yeah, my dad had a huge influence on where where I was going and where Leinster Hygiene and his encouragement 
certainly within the early days because we started off in my family home answering the phone and that kind of thing and we bought a little car and I was doing my own deliveries at the time. We now work out of warehousing an office space in Blanchardstown where we have three of our own vans now delivering all around the Dublin area and outside of Dublin we use couriers. From that experience I suppose it led us to where we are today with my father's backing and influence. We took it to the next level and we weren't afraid to take the plunges and we, we have seen many downturns within the last number of years as you can well imagine and we managed to keep our focus as to where we were going um, and that's this is where we are here today. As a part of this series I'm going to hopefully be talking to a, a range of kind of entrepreneurs and business owners, people who are a little bit closer to the start of their journey, people who are 37 years in business such as yourself, hopefully you look at different industries. But as you said, you're in business for over 37 years. But if we could look right back to maybe the, the start of how things set up, maybe your first five years. And I suppose where maybe new entrepreneurs might be looking at hopefully a video like this and looking for kind of guidance or advice and how they can get over some of their own challenges. Do you recall any particular challenge maybe during those initial five years that was a significant step to overcome and how did you get past that? I suppose from my perspective, I was very young at the time when I went into business. I was very lucky that I had the guidance of a very my father who was in business. But I think education around where you want to go is very important. The impact, as I've already stated, that my father had around the fact that he was already in business, he was able to direct, to guide me. But I think the introduction to me to networking was huge as well. It was a big part of my business at the time. Um, there wasn't that many in the early stages, but certainly for people now looking to get into business, networking is so important, whether it's a referral network group, whether it's just to make contacts, whether it's the whole shoot and shebang for business now is all about contacts and who you know and who can refer you and building up the trust within your business. And I certainly have found that invaluable, invaluable for my business. I, I want to touch on networking a little bit later, but maybe let's talk about it now. Like I said, we, we've been in a networking group together. Um, we've been through all of this kind of looking for and passing referrals and the what might be the directly kind of revenue and kind of harder business element of it. I certainly found, I don't know if you can um, reflect on this yourself at all, but the obviously the referrals and the business generated from groups like that is why you stay. It's why you put in the work every week, both attending meetings and looking for referrals for people in your network is why keeps people coming back week on week. But I certainly found that as a solo business owner in my first couple of years, one of the biggest parts I got out of it, and to this day still get out of networking, is a little bit of almost moral and mutual support, where uh, particularly at the beginning, you're in offices or you're in your living room or whatever it is, but most of your 40 to 60 to whatever hours a week you work at that beginning is alone. It's you're sitting at a computer, you're out on the road, as you said. And I really found that kind of just having a network of people who were in a similar boat, whether they were early in their journey or later in their journey, was a really helpful part of that. And like I said, on the books, the reason you keep coming back is I want to drive money and revenue for my business. But I think a massive part was actually I needed a little bit of mutual and moral support at those beginning stages. Can you reflect on that at all yourself? For sure. And I think certainly over COVID times for most business owners, most small business owners as well, really struggled as to where do they turn next, really? Um, to have a group of business people, particularly around that time of COVID, when so many people were alone, people didn't even know what Zoom was at that time. And for my business, which is, workplace supplies, facility supplies, I really struggled at the very early stages of COVID because businesses were closed. However, the hand sanitizer and the PPP 
we yeah. hit the ground running. That was a super, we had the best uh, couple of years within our business because of COVID. However, going back to your question re regarding networking, those contacts were invaluable at that point. To pick up the phone to people who were in my networking group, what are you doing about this? What is this Zoom thing all about? Can you help me? What, what am I doing here? What should I be doing? That to me was invaluable. People were sitting at home at their desks on their own and suddenly the whole world closed in on top of us. And to have that networking group of people to be able to live at the phone who were going through exactly the same as you were going through and put these plans in place that you felt like you belonged somewhere and you felt that, that the information that you needed was readily available. And that to me was just invaluable at that time. Um, it's not just about the business. Of course, networking is about what, obviously, in me and I, we pay a subscription. And it's up to me to utilise that. I'm not, talk, I'm not here to talk about B&I, but I'm here to, to tell you how invaluable networking is to any business, to any new business, whether it's a solo business or a business that requires word of mouth networking, which is what was most important for us. Um, and I just found it to be invaluable at that time. And what would you say to maybe somebody in their intro years of their business who is thinking of getting into networking, but as we've been talking about already here, and if you ever go to one of these networking meetings, whether it be BNI or any other group, there's this obviously talk about generating referrals and, and helping each other to get business. What would you say to an early business owner who would like to get involved with networking, but is maybe scared off by this obligation to bring business to the table? I think there are different forms of networking groups. There are different ways in which networking chapters are, are set up as such. But what I would say is come along and see for yourself how it works. You're not under any obligation. Just come along, particularly for young businesses, young entrepreneurs looking to get on the ladder, to get their name out there, go and visit a networking group and see how it works. There is no obligation to join. There's no obligation to hand over any money. It's about looking, watching and seeing if the fit is good for you. And all I can say around that is to build contacts, your sphere, no matter what, has to be a good thing. So come along and or find a networking group that works for you, whether you go to your local enterprise centre, whether you you know, Google whatever you Google with regards to referral networking groups and come along and watch, look and listen and see how it fits for you. That would be what I would think. Would be and the, there, there, and there is, in my own experience, there's a, you'll get a significant difference between different groups. So you'll get different attitudes, how the meeting is led, what they're driven by. And as you said, visiting is how you figure out whether something is going to work for you. So maybe let us navigate us away from our very comfortable ground that we're, we're coming on with networking. And maybe if I could ask you a little bit, not getting too in depth, but how maybe your personal life affects the business life. And particularly what I'm curious about is, are there any kind of habits, routines, hobbies that you have within your own kind of personal life that kind of bleed and drip and affect into your business life? But I suppose... I worked very hard and continue to work very hard. I work full time at my business. I am now trying to get to the stage where I can finish up a little bit earlier on a Friday that the weekend starts. Not very many people in sales want to see you on a Friday anyway. I like to think that come lunchtime on a Friday, I can head home. I've, I've, I'm very involved in sport and I teach children gymnastics. I'm involved at the moment in doing um, a League of Ireland Fitness Instructors course, which is keeping me very busy and yeah. keeping me on my toes. And I love to combine both. Um, when I say combining both, I work hard and I play hard, I suppose is probably the best answer to that. But I've, I reared my own children while running my own business and both of them are, they're the age I think I am, my children are now yeah. they're doing their own thing and but it's it's been a struggle but it's if I was to look back and say would I do anything different? Probably not. And I guess in a slightly connected question then and particularly I guess again as a if there is some advice to be passed on kind of way like how do you manage 
the day-to-day -day stress, the work-life balance in your own life, in your own business? I suppose it's just a case of when I can, I love to walk, I love to get out, I love to leave things behind. I have lots and lots of friends. I love to socialize. Um, in saying that, it's business. the business world of today is extremely stressful. Um, there is no doubt about it. The business that I am in is extremely competitive. And it's a constant thing. But I suppose after 37 years, we have a good business that we have built up now. Our cash flows are good. We've very good account section that look after where we are with, we're on top of things is probably what I'm trying to say. But from my perspective, the social life that I have after my, it's leaving the, the, the business world behind at five o'clock is very difficult to do when you work for yourself. And we all know what that is like. So in getting a, a, a happy medium when it comes to that and, you know, remembering to, to turn off your phone when you can, particularly at night time. We can be all scrolling through our emails at all hours of the, of the day and the night. But when I go home, I don't do that now anymore. I will do that in the morning. I will do that when I have to. And, you know, you're out of office is very, very important when you're not, you're on holidays or you're taking your time off. Not all of us can do it, but that would be a little piece of advice that I would say is put the out of office on because people will know that you're on holiday. You'll have built up a reputation with your clientele. And once you are organized before you go, you give them the opportunity to know exactly what's happening, that you're not going to be around, and they will be happy to meet you on your return once you have everything in play. And that would probably be is turn the phone off when you can. I think one of the best features that I think has come out in phones in recent years is this do not disturb mode. I know, for example, on my phone, I have it set up so that from, I think, 8 or 9 p.m. or something, it could even be 10, probably it's later than it probably should be. But that at that point, notifications stop coming through. My phone stops buzzing, stops calling, and it'll stay that way until 6. And this is also a kind of smart feature on it as well, that essentially if somebody was actually trying to get you for something urgent, that if two calls come in a row from the same number, the second phone call will actually ring. Uh, that, I think that that is great. I love that. I love that. I don't necessarily have to think about from eight o'clock onwards, my phone's going to stop buzzing. Anything that's actually urgent, my clients know how to reach me. I think that's a quite necessary innovation in this world where we have our smartphone, which is essentially our work computer. Of the I think that's a great idea. And you need to show me how to do that because yeah. I use airplane mode. I just put airplane mode on and it's just, then when I turn it back on again, everything comes back through. But I think that is for our own, you know, medical health, our own, dealing with our own stresses. I think that's very important in today's world. Okay, so maybe shifting the tone a little bit, something slightly more positive, but can you talk about what might have been the most rewarding moment along your entrepreneurial journey? Oh. Wow. Okay. That's quite a load of question, actually. When I think about where we have come from over the 37 years, we've had quite a lot of rewarding moments, probably this year being when our mortgage was paid up on our warehouse. That was the most wonderful time when we looked at the balance on the bank statement and it was zero, 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 zero. And I think I've got to frame that. Yeah. So that was, we struggled for 25 years paying that mortgage off. And that's a very proud moment for us because we never thought we'd see the day. We had to cut off a lot of expenses when things, the downturn came and we could barely pay bills, but we had to pay that one. That was the most important one. So I think that's a very poignant moment for, for us. Um, and we look back at, as to where we've come from. We've some very yeah, uh, lucrative accounts as in people that we've been dealing with for a long time. And that is, is huge for us. We have won a number of tenders, one being uh, the Sports Campus of Ireland. Very great tender for us. We've had it consecutively now for the last six years and we have a wonderful reputation with them. We've built up a, a great supply basis with them. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of where that has come from. I'm very proud that, of the company that we now represent being a very diverse range of products that we hold 
and that we supply. And I think our customer base, we're developing and growing all the time because of that. And as a company, for us, it's all about the service that we give to our clients. And I think that's what has set us apart in a lot of cases from our competition. So I, I think because, because you touched on tenders there, I think I'd probably, I'm somewhat obligated to mention and thank, uh, and uh, connect into what we've been talking about here about how the kind of power of networking and kind of how it benefits. But only a few weeks ago, you helped me with a tender. Uh, it was my first time going out for a tender. Now, through a story I'm not going to get involved in here, at a very late time, I found out that that tender wasn't applicable to me. But those, those things are, are a, a nightmare, for want of a better word. They're, you know, they're anyway between 30 and 60 page documents that need to be prepared very specifically on, uh, obviously, whatever this kind of government tender is going to be for. And it was really valuable to sit down with you who has been through it before, even if it's different industries. It's a, it gave me a really strong guidance on what they're looking for how to magically interpret some of these requests for tender documents. If I even just a, a small footnote on the benefits of networking and how sometimes in not so obvious ways help comes through. So thanks again for that. And okay, so we're closing to the end here, Eilish. What advice would you give to starting entrepreneurs? If you were to, if you were to look back at you starting off, what advice would you have liked to have got? Again, very loaded question. If I was to ask my younger self starting off in business, I think um, obviously education is a huge part and a huge factor. Follow your dreams. Don't ever let your dreams go. If it's what you want to do and you feel that you have your marketplace, you have thought about where you're going and where your journey is going to take you, then go follow your dreams. And I would, you know, reinstate what I stated about networking. It's so important to build up a contact sphere. Get your story out there. Get the information that you want to put out there in front of people. Social media is huge now, as we all know. It's something that you've helped me with in the past and going forward. That's the basis where all businesses now are being built on. It's so different to when my business, it was the knock on the door thing. This has all changed now. And it's great. It's for, it's for the better, I feel. A little bit of both to, is, is always good. Don't stray away from the people like to buy from people. And it's so important to be that person that can put themselves in front of people and not just hide behind the social media. People buy from people. People like to find out about Sean and what you're doing and who you are and it's not just about your business, but it is about the person behind the business. So if anything, that's what I would probably take more with me going forward if I was to do it again. Yeah. So obviously my, my business is marketing and uh, I could very easily side rail every single one of these videos and start going into big marketing tangent, but that's not what I want to do. But I, I think the people buy from people thing, if I can speak on that very briefly, is it's something I tell clients all the time. And even, for example, we're here today and we have lovely professional lights and cameras and an audio setup and everything like that. And it puts us in front of a camera. Hopefully some people who might not have seen us before will see us in, these, in this video. But... When I talk to clients, it's not a strange thing at all to basically meet a room full of people who are really wanting to promote their business, but not a single one of them wants to get in front of a camera. And there is, there's that, there's, there's a process to convince them over that line. Cause as you said, people buy from people and why I brought up, say the lights and the cameras and stuff here, there's also this, it's a word I'm looking for, but I guess what you wouldn't expect, uh, for one of a better phrase, cause I've completely lost what the word I'm looking for was. <laughs> But where you'd almost expect that really highly professionally produced videos would be the absolute best thing that you could put onto your social media. Stuff with great lights and cameras and effects and all this kind of stuff. And while that will ring true for a lot of things, like maybe specifically like ads that are going out, you want them to be really high production. But a lot of the time, Joe, a, 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 a a business owner with a selfie camera recording themselves in rough lights and all that kind of stuff, that 
works really well because it, it it brings back to that human element where people buy from people. They don't they troll the guy who picks up his selfie camera and talks to the camera for a couple of minutes. Where whereas with something that's highly produced, is how much money and how many editors and any what your people that they have involved and everything to get them to this point where there's that authenticity maybe with you know, the camera and yeah that's something I deal with a lot of just trying to get people over that line of try to get you comfortable for the camera because exactly people buy from people. Okay, so how do you measure success in business beyond financial performance? I think that, you know, that's quite a, how I measure it, it could be something completely different than how other people might approach that. But you get to a stage or you want to earn a certain amount of money, you want your business to be in a certain place or whatever. But I suppose at the end of the day, the older you get, the more you realize how important it is to actually, that life, you have to take it with both hands. A little saying that I always say is you have to bring your own sunshine with you. So no matter how tough things go or how life gets in the way, you have to try and focus a way of actually where do you stop or where does happiness come into play? And I think the older I get, the more I realize that it is the simple things in life. I've been running my own business for more years than I care to remember, as they say. But at the end of the day, 37 years in business and you asked me the question, would I do it all over again? Yes, I would do it all over again. Um, maybe slightly different, maybe go into a different business at the same time. It's not, for me, financially, of course, it's so important because that's why we're all in business is to make money, is to, to give ourselves a better life. But I suppose the older head of me says, I'm comfortable where I am. I'm happy where I am. My health and our health is our happiness at the end of the day. And that's the most important thing to remember, in my opinion, from the age that I am now to where I started. And it's been a, a railroad, but it has been a road that when I look back, I'm glad I took. Penultimate question. Two, two more. Another one. Okay, all right. <laughs> Without trying to give away your trade secrets or your big plans for the future uh, that'll get you into trouble, but are there any plans for Ailish Hughes for Leicester, Leicester hygiene products in the future that you can tell us about? I, I'm not going to divulge at the moment, but there are lots of things that are happening at the minute for us. Um, we're, we're steadily growing, diversifying into more of a facility supplies company now. And um, there are some plans that I don't really want to record or don't want you want to, to tell. I get into trouble, but lots of new things happening and lots of new innovation around the corner, which we're very excited about. And we you know, certainly watch this space for English shoes. I think. From my perspective, lots more travel, lots more half days, lots more good times and bringing that sunshine with me is where I'd like to be. My, I hope to qualify in my fitness world by the end of April and watch this space. We might be combining everything there. Okay, final question and something a little bit lighter, something that I've taken from, I've spent a whole load of my life either in the scouts or as a scout leader and kind of managing kind of teams and that kind of thing. And something we do at the end of every camp or the end of a big year or something like that is just a really quick round of highs and lows. So what I'm going to just ask you is, do you have a high and a low from the last year that you could share? A high and a low. I'm assuming you mean from a business perspective. Yeah, more or less. I'm busy, so yeah. I think certainly the high for us was the winning of the tender that we put so much hard work into that showed that we were one of, if not the best at that particular time for that company and we won that tender and it was a lucrative enough, big enough tender for a small company to win. That was a very much a high for us. And the second high, which probably is the first high really, was the paying off of the mortgage yeah. on our warehouses. So that for us was a, was a really great opportunity, great win for us, really. And a low. I, I hate to end it on a low, but you started to I so one for the To be me. honest with you, I can't really think of a low, to be honest. Isn't that good? Isn't that positive? That's very positive. I cannot think of a low. Um, and I'm sure I'll probably come out of here looking for that low in my head, but 
No, it's their only good highlight of the cell. And then hello. So you go there. Yeah. Thank you very much for being on this video. Steeries start up to success. You are a great shining example of that. I'm very grateful that you came along to be our first guest on this. Thank you very much. AOC News, Enster High School Products. It has been wonderful. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for allowing me to be your favorite.